Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I'm sharing with you my five predictions for the e-bike industry in 2021. The first trend that I think we're gonna see in 2021 is the introduction of more mid-drive electric bicycles at reasonable prices. I think it sort of started with the Priority Current back here, which is a 3,000-ish dollar pretty nice mid-drive electric bike, something that has many components and specs of bikes that are normally in the $4,000 range. But I think we're gonna to continue to see more e-bike companies introducing mid-drive bikes at lower prices. Obviously, hub motors are still going to be a thing. It's hard to compete with the cost advantage of hub motor e-bikes. They're not going away. But I do think that with the introduction of more and more mid-drive companies that are producing OEM parts at lower costs, we're gonna see more electric bicycle companies able to enter the market with more reasonably priced mid-drive e-bikes. For a long time, we've seen companies like Bosch mostly, but also Broza, uh, Shimano, Yamaha to a certain extent, holding most of the mid-drive market. And those drives are quite nice, but they're just more costly. So it's kept prices high. But I really think that 2021 is gonna see a wave of new e-bikes with some of these other less well-known mid-drive manufacturers, but they still make pretty nice parts. And we're gonna see some pretty interesting new mid-drive bikes that are affordable to the common man. The next trend I think we're gonna see is more of an emphasis on 20 inch tires, especially three and four inch wider tires. Here in Tel Aviv where I live, this is basically the standard. There are tens of thousands of e-bikes in this city. We might've already passed 100,000 e-bikes. Basically e-bike adoption is huge here and probably 90% of the e-bikes on the road use 20 inch tires and maybe half of those are 20 inch fat tires. To me, we've already seen this trend starting. E-bikes like the popular Scorpion and Hyper Scorpion from Juiced, uh, the Rad Runner from uh, Rad Power Bikes, Electric XP. So many of these affordable, nimble, easy to use sort of city urban utility e-bikes are already shifting to 20 inch fat tires. And I just think this is such a useful utilitarian form factor because it creates a smaller, easier to manage e-bike that still has enough rollover like a larger wheel that it's useful in cities and in riding on trails and places where you wouldn't want to get stuck with a narrow tire. Obviously, normal commuter bikes, hybrid bikes, mountain bikes, these things are still going to be around, but I do think we're gonna see a continued shift towards more e-bikes incorporating the smaller, wider tire because it's just such a useful form factor. And I think people are starting to open their eyes to what's not a normal e-bike tire, but is still a very effective e-bike tire with some pretty significant advantages. Next on the battery side, I'm sorry to say, but I don't think we're gonna see any big breakthroughs in battery technology in 2021, at least for e-bikes. The thing is, no one's making e-bike specific battery cells. The only way we get new cells in the e-bike industry is when they trickle down from other industries. For example, some of the first really interesting high capacity cells were the Panasonic 18650Bs, and those were basically coming from Panasonic developing higher capacity cells for electric cars. Uh, they're very similar to the cells that went into the Tesla Model S and Model X. So those trickle down into e-bikes. Then we had some of the high power cells like the Samsung 25R and the Sony V-Series cells that were actually developed for power tools and those trickled down into e-bikes and were used for higher power e-bikes. And that led to a lot of what we have today. But I don't see anything on the horizon in 2021 that leads me to believe we're gonna have any big breakthroughs. Now I do think we're gonna continue to see capacity walk up Nowadays, something like 650 watt hours or 700 watt hours is becoming pretty standard. And we're starting to push up into the eight, 900, even 1000 watt hour range. So we might see that continue to grow. Also, we're probably gonna see more incorporation of 2700 and 21700 cells into e-bikes, meaning the capacity again is going to grow a bit, but no big breakthroughs, no crazy new chemistries, no solid state batteries for e-bikes just yet, at least not for 2021. Next, and again, unfortunately, I think we're gonna to continue to see long waits from electric bicycle companies and a lot of back orders still. As many of you guys know, in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic completely wrecked the supply chain for pretty much every electric bicycle company out there. A lot of these companies still have wait times of 12, 18, 24 months for parts like brakes and handlebars from a lot of these factories in Asia that were slow to get back to work. Plus there was a huge demand that came after the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. And there were so many people getting out onto the road wanting to get back out on e-bikes. 
And so combine the lower supply with the crazy demand, we saw huge waits for e-bikes and a lot of back orders. I think that's going to continue into 2021, at least for the first half of the year, because companies are still trying to get more stock in and there are still supply chain disruptions. It's unfortunate, but what can you do? That's supply and demand, that's what happens. I'm just glad that prices aren't shooting up based on the huge demand. I think that e-bike companies have been really good about not trying to gouge and charge more when they probably could because again, that's supply and demand. When there's low supply and high demand, you can raise prices and people are still gonna buy. Lastly, my fifth prediction for 2021 is that we're going to see a lot more small e-bike startups and especially new Asian e-bike startups beginning to uh, market in the West. I think this is gonna be caused by the huge demand that we just talked about caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the fact that so many of these companies are starting to see a huge opportunity where you can roll out basically a white label e-bike. You can go to any electric bicycle manufacturer in Asia, put your sticker on the side of a bike, and suddenly you've got your own e-bike company. This has already happened to a certain extent, but I think we're gonna to continue to see it develop over the year. There's gonna be more companies entering the market, especially a lot of Asian companies, companies that I often describe as no name, just because no one knows who they are. They weren't here last night, they're here today. And um, I'm not sure if this is necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Obviously, it's great to have more options and it will probably lower prices, however, Whenever you get started with a new company, you have no idea if they're reputable. You have no idea what kind of service you're going to get, especially if they're an overseas company. So it is something I think to be a bit wary of, and I'll be interested to see how it unfolds. But I think this is only going to lead to more options for e-bikes, not less. All right, so there you have it. Those are my top five predictions for the e-bike industry in 2021. I will be fascinated to return to this video in a year and see how well I did. I hope you guys do too and keep me honest. Last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... John W. So congrats, John. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from my book, DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, the ultimate do-it-yourself e-bike guide or electric motorcycles and let me know where to send it. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you want and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.